Welcome to your sixth web scraping tutorial on Python. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the network tab and some network latency things. In the last tutorial, we showed the difference between scraping the page source of a website and replicating a get get request with a response with a request header. So I'll just copy the request header that we got in the last tutorial and paste that into the browser. So here's the file that we got with the request header. It's 34 lines long, as opposed to uh, Google Finance. And it was Apple, which is If we were to preview it, it is 800 lines long. So we made a significant improvement in the amount of data we have to download. So in your network tab, everything that's coming across your browser, you can see the size of it and you can see the time of it, the time it takes to download. So this whole web page, what we were previously downloading in tutorials one through four took 250 milliseconds to download the entire page source, and it's 53.91 kilobytes. The new URL we are able to find, it takes 119 milliseconds to download, and it's 50, 507 bytes. So it's roughly half of the time Oh wow, 46 milliseconds, uh, 750, 64. Um, let's see what this one is. 180. It looks like it's roughly half to a quarter of the time. And 507 bytes is a whole lot less than 53 kilobytes. So it looks like this is a much faster way to get your data, not to mention that you don't have to do any regular expressions to it to get the data that we want, which was this last element. So in this tutorial, we're going to be replicating the same thing using the network tab and replicating a get request using the request headers on another website. And that website is bloomberg.com. So type in bloomberg.com and we'll go to Apple, which is our standard stock. And we see here that they have this nice chart and they have the last price, which is what we've been using as an example for these tutorials. So you go to the network tab and We'll disregard all of these image beacons. And what you notice is that there's a lot of stuff that comes up. There's a lot of stuff being sent to this browser, to this web app. And half of them are web beacons, which are just GIF images that are used to get around the same origin policy. The rest are JavaScript, um, images, basically all the stuff you need for your website. But if you look at this tab down below, you'll see XHR. And what XHR is, is it's basically all of the data that's being sent to your web service. And this data, it's formatted in such a way that it's easy to use. It's either an XML, a JSON file, a CSV. XHR is always a data file. So we can, re we can refresh the page and we'll see that there's one result. And it looks like, actually we can see the data type. It says that it is a JSON file. And that's actually a good thing because JSON is very easy to manipulate. It's like an XML. So we'll click on this and we can see it gives us the last price right here. That's excellent. 
it gives us the time of the last update, price precision, percent change. It gives us a lot of useful information. So how do we replicate this request? We go to the headers file, and here's the request URL, which is basically the, uh, just copy that, paste it into the URL bar, and here it gives us all the information we need. And we can see it's one line instead of 3,000 lines. So it's significantly less time consuming and significantly less resource intensive. So we'll just copy this URL and we'll go to our Python file. And we'll replace our previous URL with this. Save the file. Alt P. And we get an error. Oh, it's because this was pertaining to the past tutorial. So we'll get rid of this and we'll just print out HTML text. And we might wonder why. Why won't it print out? And the reason is because of this www right here. It has to be an HTTP request because Python needs to know what kind of request to make to the server. Does it make a get request, post request, a... It doesn't know what kind of request, so it needs to know HTTP. And now this will work fine. So we print out what we get back from the server. It gives us back this JSON file. And you might think, why don't we use a regular expression to split this or something similar to that. And Python, you can actually import a JSON library. So you can type in import JSON, and then you can do data equals JSON dot load HTML text. But there's something else you have to consider. HTML text is now string because of the read command, which converts it to a string. But json.load, it takes a file. So we actually can't read this. So if we were just to print out data and we were to, to run this, and it gives us an error. It says string object has no attribute read because JSON doesn't want a string. It wants a file. So we'll actually go down to the end, get rid of this read, and now it should work perfectly. And it reads it perfectly into JSON. And if you've ever worked with JSON, you probably know that it gives you back an associative array. And basically what an associative array is, is it's like a hash map, a any kind of map where you map a string to something. So you have to give it a key. And in this case, we have to find out what the key is. So when you're looking at its response, we want the last price. And whatever is in the quotes is usually the, the key. So we'll put in data of last price. And with JSON, it's basically the same thing as an, as an array when you have an associative array, except, if, except you don't give an index you give it a key. So the key is last price. Run it, and it gives us 358 
0.5, which is exactly what we wanted. It prints us, it gives us the last price of the stock. So this has been your sixth web scraping tutorial in Python. And in this tutorial, we went over using the JSON library in order to interpret JSON response text. We were also able to reduce a 3000 line website such as Bloomberg to a one line JSON response text. And this is going to save us considerable time in the future when we're making thousands of these requests in a very short period of time. So thank you for watching your sixth web scraping tutorial in Python.